Hi everyone, my name is Mackenzie and I'm here with my colleague Amrik to talk about secrets detection and we're going to go through some of the features and products that Git Guardian has to help you keep secrets out of your Git repositories. Now of course it's really important to make sure that you don't have any sensitive information within your Git repositories. But it's even better if we can prevent sensitive information from getting there in the first place. And this is why we have some great developer tools that enable you to make sure that secrets don't enter into your Git repositories. So today, I'm gonna to be running you through some of the developer tools that we have and talk about how we can create a pre-commit Git hook or CI pipelines within GitLab. And then Amrik's gonna take you through our full featured dashboard to show how security teams or developers can investigate, remediate, incidents that happen within their repositories and also view analytics to see the changes or how we're progressing in secrets detection. So let's not waste any more time. Why don't we jump into a demonstration of how you can set up a pre-commit Git hook within your repositories. So today on my screen, I have here just a Python project. It's a dummy project, but looks fairly similar to anyone that would have worked in Python before. And we're gonna use a product called Git Guardian Shield, which is an open source product from Git Guardian. And using this tool, we can scan directories, install pre-commit hooks, or use it to install in our CI CD pipelines. So to start with, we need to install GG Shield or Git Guardian Shield onto our machine. Now I'm gonna use the Python package manager pip to do this, but you can use Docker or you can use Brew. Uh, whatever tools you're used to working through. But for me, I'm gonna go pip3 install ggshield. And there we have it. We've just installed ggshield onto our machine. Now, ggshield uses the Git Guardian API and its detection engine. It does this so we can maintain the best possible secrets detection and also so that we can run validity checks on the secrets that we find. But to do this, we need an API key. We can grab a free API key from the Git Guardian dashboard. So you can sign up in a few minutes to the Git Guardian dashboard, head on down to the API tab, and then just click on create new API. We can add the scope just to scan, which is what we're gonna do today. But if we want to have more power, we can also manage bulk incidents and be able to kind of view more information using the incidents uh, scope. This is if you wanna create your own dashboard to be able to view or remediate. But today we're just gonna go through and add that scan uh, functionality. Once we have our API key, we can add it into a .env file. Now Git Guardian Shield will search in your environment variables for this uh, API key, but if you just put it in a .env file, then it will automatically add it in there for you. So it's very, very simple. So now we have GG Shield installed and we also have our API key in a .env file, we can go ahead and install a pre-commit git hook. So GG Shield install m for mode, and we're gonna go local. Now local means that we're gonna install it onto this particular uh, repository. But if I want to install it onto all the repositories I have on my machine, then I can use the command global, and it will install a pre-commit hook everywhere on my machine for all of my repositories. So that's a great feature, particularly if you're working in a lot of projects. Okay, so now that we have our pre-commit hook installed, well, let's test to see if we can uncover any secrets with it. So I'm gonna open up a file. So I'm gonna open up here uh, a file called Python server. And you'll see in here we have a contributed Slack key variable. I'm just gonna paste into here a Slack token. Now this isn't a real Slack token, so don't try and exploit it, but it's close enough that it's gonna trigger the detection engines. So now that we have this Slack key in there, I'm gonna save this file and see if we can commit it into our repository. Git add Python. Okay, and let's commit this. And what you'll see here is it's actually blocked that commit. And it's let us know that on line 10 in our Python, our Python underscore server file, we have a Slack key. 
So this is blocks that commit. So obviously right now is the best time to try and conduct some remediation. I can remove this, add it in into where I normally manage my secrets. And I don't even need to tell anyone else about this because I can manage the entire incidents locally. Now, let's say that this isn't a real secret that is a placeholder and I really want to commit it into the repository anyway. I don't want Gagalian Shield to block it. Now this is great because we can use the ignore SHA to do this. So if I run the command gg shield ignore last found. What this does is it creates a brand new file for me here called gitguardian.yaml. And within this YAML file, we can see that it's added a SHA token that matches this. This means that we can share this YAML file. We can include it uh, within our repository so that other people can also ignore the same secrets. But at no point do we reveal the identity or the value of our API key. So a great little feature for ignoring it. So now that I've ignored it, I should be able to commit this into my repository without any trouble. So let's find out. I'm gonna use the same commit. Voila, it's gone through no troubles at all. So. Let's see what happens when I push this into my repository. So now I can head over to my GitLab repository. I see that that change has come through and that push has come through, but I've also added ggshield into my CICD pipeline within GitLab. So this means that even though I ignored that secret locally, it should still be detected within the CICD pipeline. So let's see that. If I head over to pipelines, yes, you'll see that the latest check actually failed. So let's go have a look and see what, why that is. We can see that Git Guardian has failed in that and we get the exact same message that we got in, the, and in our terminal. And there you have it. This is just some of the developer tools that can help you prevent committing secrets into your repositories. But now Americ is going to show you how this translates on the dashboard and how you can utilize the full features of this to get more out of your secrets detection experience. So Americ, I'll take it over to you. I'll leave it over to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Mackenzie. That was great. So I'm going to be showing you the Git Guardian dashboard and UI uh, in more detail. So, so this dashboard, as Mackenzie mentioned, is going to be scanning all of your GitLab projects on a post-receive basis. So that means that we're detecting secrets uh, as soon as they arrive on the monitored uh, code uh, that you have implemented with Git Guardian. So looking at the perimeter section here, uh, I can see that I have two projects currently integrated. Uh, by default, at the very beginning, uh, we will show you a health status uh, that will be unknown because we would not have performed a historical scan. So the first thing the solution is going to ask you is to perform a full historical scan uh, of your integrated projects so that we can tell you if any secrets have already been uh, committed there. Uh, so this is the case for uh, Project Alpha uh, and another one called Sample Secrets here. And I'm going to click into it to show you how it looks. So, as you can see, I'm taking to the incidents section here, uh, and I see that I have two secrets leaked in that uh, project alpha repo. One is a Slack bot token, the other one is a generic password. Uh, what's interesting here, uh, and it doesn't show straight away, is that we have a smart grouping feature. So if any of those two keys are leaked multiple times in different projects or by different developers, uh, we're going to regroup them under the same secret incident to make it much more digestible uh, for you as a developer for your security team. So let me show you a secret incident in more detail. Okay, so as you can see, I'm taking to this page where the only occurrence in this case is shown uh, with the date, the author, uh, the project name, and you have a quick snapshot of the secret that was exposed. Now, top right hand side here, uh, you can assign a severity to the incidents. Uh, this is something for which we'll um, soon have a playbook for. So you can automatically assign severities to different incidents. Uh, so a bit more will be coming on that. Uh, you can assign the incident to somebody for to work on remediation. Uh, but most interesting, I think, uh, and this is a feature that our customers particularly love, is the collect feedback feature. So when you're dealing with a lot of secret incidents, especially after your first historical scans, 
uh, this is a very powerful feature. Uh, essentially, uh, you can share that incident only isolated from that yeah, isolated incident to the responsible developer uh, so that they can provide feedback on it. Uh, sometimes you know, it's the security team that looks at all this information, doesn't really know if this is a sensitive secret or not. It might be a test credential, for example. Uh, and so the best person to inform them about that is going to be the developer. Uh, so this feature enables you to share that unique link. Uh, let me show you how that looks. Uh, the developer uh, has the same view, essentially. Uh, they see uh, the uh, commit patch here, and uh, they can submit feedback about the incidents. Now, an additional feature to that, and this is heavily going to depend on your company culture, is that you can also enable the developer to uh, remediate or ignore that incident. So they could flag the secret as a, as a true positive uh, and say that it had revoked it. Or on the other hand, they can say, well, no, it's a test credential. It's okay to be in the code. Uh, what's great is that the developer provides that information and then the security team goes back to the dashboard uh, and can you know, have a, a very good understanding of what happened there and see exactly what the developer has done. Okay, so now having a quick look at the analytics page, this is going to give you an overview of how your team is performing in regards to secrets leaking within your repos. Now, the first thing that you can look at is the total number of secrets leaking on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis. See how that evolves over time. Uh, you can also see which secrets are the most vulnerable to being exposed within your code. So maybe you can focus your efforts on different types of secrets there. Uh, looking at the perimeter analytics, uh, this is going to give you an overview of um, which sources are the most impacted by the exposure of secrets, the leakage of secrets within the code. Uh, see how that evolves over time as well. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, specific teams are assigned to specific projects, therefore you can target your uh, efforts on particular teams if you want to, you know, work on training or things like that. And at the very bottom here, uh, you can uh, track the performance of uh, GG Shield. So essentially, uh, if you implement uh, the Git Guardian API for secret detection of so Shield within your uh, CI pipeline, for example, or as a pre-commit or a pre-push, uh, this will uh, give you data on the total number of scans conducted and then the percentage of commits that contain the secrets there. Uh, so you can see how that evolves over time, and this you know could be a, a good example and illustration of you know how much uh, the pre-commit for your hook is uh, leveraged within your organization and you know how many secrets it's preventing from even entering your code base in the first place yeah. so i'd like to finish off with a very short case study just to show the, the efficiency uh, of the solution so here we're looking at one of our historical customers on this uh, internal monitoring solution uh, they're in this insurance industry they have around 400 developers uh, and we've scanned over 200,000 commits for them. So looking at the, the statistics I'm going to show you today, uh, we're looking at the last six months versus uh, the previous six months before that. Uh, now you can see that they actually decreased the total number of secrets detected within their repos by 50%. Uh, so that's huge when you think about it. Uh, and you know, similarly, 65% uh, less uh, sources or so projects are impacted uh, by the leakage of secrets. Uh, and looking at the, the pre-commit hooks, so they implemented that a couple months ago, uh, there are around 3% of pre-commit hooks are catching secrets, so there's quite a few um, secrets that we're also helping them, um, well, helping them prevent from entering uh, their version. Uh, and here you have it. Uh, Mackenzie, I'll leave it back to you for uh, some finishing thoughts. Thanks, Emmerich. That was great. Just a reminder that Git Guardian is free for developers and teams under 25 developers. This includes all the developer tools and the dashboard that Emmerich just showed you. So you can sign up for that today at gitguardian.com. We'll head straight to dashboard.gitguardian.com. And if you have any troubles, feel free to reach out to the sales team or myself through our contacts page. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope these tools help you keep your repositories secrets free.